Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with another podcast episode number. This ain't an episode. This is the Saloon Sit Down number two. Another number encore. Two. Another encore coming right at you. And uh, I mean, you saw it first. We have Terry Woodcock on once again. And uh, Phil, we also have a bunch of special guests. Yeah, a lot so, of special guests. Some faces that you guys have seen here before um in some capacities they've had their own episodes they've had some cameos and also a fresh face uh it's gonna be a good one here tonight we're gonna learn a lot of fun things tell a lot more stories so make sure right now you make sure you like and share this video across social media we're gonna be going here and also if you think you have something to add to these stories here tonight and you've been up and down the road with terry and our some of our guests let us know. Send us a message. Maybe we'll drop you into the feed here tonight. This round table is really an open door. As long as the saloon's open for business, we'll take anybody that come uh, comes our way uh, here with discussion. So uh, yeah, it should be fun right there. You're right there. The saloon doors are wide open. So send us a message, and you might get on the show tonight. But anyway, why we should introduce our guests tonight because I mean uh, they've been pretty busy lately in the shop. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they're very busy. You know, we have our Monster Truck Hall of Famer, Terry Woodcock, but he's not alone. He's sitting in the shop with two very special guests. One of them is his brother, Dave Woodcock, and also uh, sometimes driver unnamed and untamed and for straight up racing, one of our past guests, Juan Munoz. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. Great Thanks, being Phil. here. Thanks, guys. So uh, we touched the surface talking about you guys have been busy in the shop so what's been going on lately at the fun toy shop ah, love that fun toy shop maybe gary shots watching he'll jump on in a minute uh it was interesting the way that name come about we are doing all kinds of things we're getting ready for some great news to come out uh out of the shop uh, a lot of excitement right now a lot of prep work there's some things we can talk about some things we can't but uh it's been fun. Been a lot of work. We've been thrashing this weekend. We're going to be doing a lot of work. We got uh, Juan coming here, and Dave's here like always. I got him locked in. He can't find a way out. <laughs> and uh, we got uh, Buddha coming down. So we're looking forward to a pretty productive weekend. So productive weekend. Uh, you, you know, previous weekends there, you're working on a lot of things. I know you're keeping a lot of close knit, but do you go in with like a plan of attack with all those different projects or is it just like, ah, oh, we'll look over here and we'll work on this today and go from there? Well, I think you could ask these guys, we're pretty much, we have so many projects to do and there's so much stuff to work on. If you get where you hit a wall on something, you just turn around and there's another one. There's a lot of stuff to work on and we kind of usually try to pick it by whatever parts have come in or whatever we have, we need to get done. We're trying to get, certain vehicles to certain levels and some of that's to get them running driving testing and some of it's just uh finding out what we got on our hands how much work we have to look forward there's to there's always something to do yeah <laughs> always we're, we're, we're gonna work on several things this weekend uh i know dave he, he might not act like it all the time but he loves doing this as much as i do and juan he's you know he's that inspiration you see him he just enjoys it he comes over with a big smile on his face and just kind of drives you to have a little bit more uh, uh ambition a little bit more work it just you know you're gonna get a lot more done when everybody shows up there's times i might be, be here by myself and fiddling with some things but when dave shows up we always get so much done and then with uh juan coming and and he's uh buddha coming in now we're, we're getting some pretty productive weeks we've got a lot of neat stuff that we're looking at getting done in the next couple of weeks. So, uh, Dave, do you agree with that statement? Do you truly enjoy uh, going out there and working with Terry as much as you do? Oh, I do. It's, uh, it's always uh, a challenge. Uh, we've got uh, many uh, uh, projects going, and you get bogged down on one, you jump over to another one. Like Terry said, if you uh, – if you're waiting on parts or uh, you hit a wall with one, you can jump over to the other, and there's there's plenty to be done. Literally, turn around. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, yeah. Juan, oh, go ahead. Uh, we'll, 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 oh, go ahead. All right, yeah. So I'll definitely want to get Juan's take here. So you're sitting next to uh, some of the famous Woodcock brothers. I know you've been to the shop multiple times. So how much do you learn by going out there and working alongside Terry and Dave? I mean, every day is a, a learning experience, you know, for someone like me, you know, just being around so many different teams, so many different people, so much history. Um, every day I'm learning something just as far as uh, just how to do something a different way or just where the sport came from and, you know, how it's evolved throughout the years, throughout the decades. Uh, there have been, you know, a few trucks here that I've looked at. And I'm like, I never knew it was like that. I'm impressed that, you know, these guys were doing the things that they were doing back then. And, uh, you know, and they're here to, you know, show us. And I guess we're bringing back, you know, to, to show people what that was like back then. So we're talking about projects. What about the project behind you? The Orange Blossom Special. Tell us about that. That's one of, I think, all of our favorites. It's just it's so unique, and it's such an iconic piece. And we're uh, we're getting it going so we can make sure that everything's in working order because, you know, after it went to Australia and came back, it kind of got lost in the States for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. So we're still finding out some things and some conditions and some stuff. We want to make sure everything's going to be in working order. we got to figure out how far to tear it down before we – put it back together and we want to keep as much of Alan in it as we can. Every, I call it fingerprint, every, you know, everything we can do to make it look as great as he had it looking, but keep as much as he did on it as we possibly can. So when you take, um, so when you, yeah, I was going to say, I know Juan loves working on it and I know Dave loves working on it. And I know Buddha's excited to work on it. He worked on it a uh, weekend before last when he was here. Mm -hmm. And it's very close to taking a test drive, like probably this weekend. <laughs> so when you're taking on these projects for like such historical pieces in the monster truck industry, uh, I, there's so many pieces out there that can use some restoration or rebuild of some kind. Uh, how do you select what vehicle you're going to bring into the shop? And then from there, how are you deciding what you're going to do with it and how you're going to approach it? Well, each one, you never know what you have until you get it. Um, these guys can both tell you that. You get new projects in all the time. There's a lot of stuff people don't know about. But uh, you got to kind of tear into it to find out what you have. But there's one thing that all of them have in common, and that's they, they've got to be iconic. And I think every piece we have is a very iconic piece. Um, we've been... Uh, trying to think of what other ones we can add to it. You know, we have a lot of people offering us trucks constantly and everything is steel door, door slammer, uh, leaf spring, stage one trucks, you know, except for the tank, of course, but it's so iconic from that same time period. We just, we had to have it. Absolutely. That was, that was a no brainer. So you never know until you tear into it. I mean, we found things we thought were going to be in a lot better shape and they were a lot worse than we thought and stuff that we thought was going to be in worse shape and, and turned out way better. So give and take. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at a lot of the different projects and I, it's, it's been so many and I know, you know, they, they take so many different approaches and, you know, a lot of skill sets. So, uh, you know, this question's for for Dave first, and anybody else can chime in. Uh, Dave, is there something that you maybe specialize more than Terry or Juan or whoever else passes through the shop that makes some of these restorations and rebuilds a little easier? Not so much on the restorations. Uh, my, uh, I guess, uh, my main part was was newer chassis. Uh, Two chassis, so I'm I'm getting uh, I'm getting to know these these older trucks uh, a lot better and what it took to build them and uh, what it's taken to uh, to restore them and bring them back to to how they originally were, which is a a big thing with Terry is is as original as it can be at the time that it ran and he's he's a stickler for. Uh, the his, historical 
uh, trucks being brought back with the, the exact parts that they had, uh, if not the closest to re uh, replicating that part. So trying to, trying to keep it uh, very original. Yeah, Juan. What's your take on that too? I know you. You know you're a modern driver and really in the trenches on what's going on with current monster trucks. So being around a lot of historical vehicles, is it foreign for you to be working on some of these uh, trucks compared to you know unnamed and untamed or California Kid? Uh, for me, as a as a fan, as a, a super fan, I guess a driver. I mean, it's I, I love every bit of it. You know, every it doesn't matter to me if it's uh, the very first truck or the very current, you know, last current truck right now. Um, I love every bit of it. I mean, it, regardless of what it is, I just like learning something new, uh, just seeing a different perspective, you know, from, you know, anybody else. Um, and just, you know, just having my hands on on something, you know, it's it's what I love. It's the passion that I have. Um, so for me, every day is a great day when I'm around a monster truck and, you um, you know, as far as, you know, well, like what Dave said earlier, uh, you know, one of those skills is, you know, you know, you kind of want to perfect is, uh, or you like to perfect is how to disassemble, you know, certain things. Like in this case, you know, we have historic, you know, pieces of, you know, monster truck history that we wouldn't want to take away that, you know, that fingerprint or that, that touch of whatever the, or whoever was the last uh, driver on there or the, or the creator of it. You know, for example, you know, I would, I have been working, if you guys haven't seen, is uh, Flying High, you know, taking apart that truck, you know, there are a lot of parts there that are hard to come by or also, uh, you know, uh, custom made. So you got to be very careful on taking that kind of stuff apart. I mean, you don't just start tearing stuff up and, you know, fit, you know put it back later on. You know, you got to take your time and it, it, it takes it takes it takes that passion and it takes that uh, just that care. Yeah, David, David sees that a lot because, and so does Juan, because there's things that we could do easier or there's things that we could do faster or there's a better way to do it now, but that's not how it was built. And, and my vision is to see these trucks come back in their most iconic viewed look. So, you know, if it was a magazine cover or a big article or a, a VHS tape that really shows that look, that's what we're going for is – Original as possible, and I mean, stickler down to like, I buy a lot of parts. You know, we we pick up stuff all over the place, and it's got to be the right bar. If it was Holbrook, it's got to be Holbrook. If it was Smitty Built, it's got to be Smitty Built. If it was a double double shorty, it's got to be a double double shorty. If it was a triple double long, it just I just everything has to be the way it was. And if we can't find it, then we'll build it. A lot of fans pay attention to that. <laughs> they do. Oh yeah, they'll they'll catch it and call you out on it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the that's the biggest thing is to make sure that the fans are happy just as much as we are when we see them. It's we don't want to we don't want to disappoint any of you uh, super no, fans. It, it's going to be hard, you know, to do a lot of it. But that's that's what we strive for is to see the, all the positive comments and to see the positive stuff. Like like I say, a lot of people offer us to contact us through Messenger, different things, and offer to buy the trucks and. And I hope I don't create any bad feelings, but some of them don't fit into what we're doing. And I think some, some people probably get a little upset over that, but but we're trying to not, you know, just second to none. We want everything to be just well-known, iconic, famous trucks that people remember from their childhood or remember from VHS watching like Juan. He probably didn't get to see a lot of the trucks run you know, himself, maybe some of them he did, maybe some he didn't, but now he's working on those trucks. These are the trucks that when I went to a show, these are the trucks I ran against. And to see these beautiful trucks get let go and become so thrashed and just, I don't know, unloved. It's like, that's what we're here to do is try to bring them back to their glory to see the shine again and to see all the fans. I want to I got a lot of ideas, and one of them is to recreate some of the shows and some of the photo shoots, including all of the trucks that were at the shows and photo shoots. And I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't sound real practical, but ask David. I, I, uh, I live, eat, and breathe this stuff. I mean, it's my mind's going 24/7, and 
and uh, it doesn't shut down. And I'm always trying to figure out a way to get another truck and a way to get a part. And uh, I'm looking at pictures going, we can recreate that picture. We have all those trucks. We can redo this show. We have all those trucks. That's a sickness I have. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we have the first person that has chimed in in our messenger. Like I said, if you have something to add to this roundtable, uh, shoot us a message and we'll make sure you get into the queue here. Uh, Vincent, why don't you bring on who is our first person here waiting in the queue? Well, this guy, he's been at the Fun Toy Shop recently along with the other three guys, and that is Buddha. Buddha, welcome to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow night, Buddha? Oh, uh, you know, going to some guy's shop where he, uh, he lets me work on stuff. Nice. <laughs> going, going to the fun shop, so they Looking say. Looking forward to you getting here, man. we got some great plans for this weekend. Looking forward to you participating. Uh, I'm, <laughs> trust me, I'm looking forward to it, too. Missing last week uh, wasn't very fun. I sat around the house twiddling with my thumbs going, what do I do? So I built a dog <laughs> house. <laughs> I would have traded places with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without saying too much, we can tell you last week was a thrasher, 7,000 miles in eight and a half days with 11 stops in various parts across the United States. And it was it was brutal. I mean, in a semi-trucking trailer, that's a, that's a lot of miles. Eight and a half days, it seemed like longer. Yeah, it seemed like longer. And we were in snowstorms, ice storms, all kinds of crazy weather and stuff, but well, I didn't tell David exactly what we were doing until we got about a thousand miles away, so he couldn't jump out and run. And when uh, I told him what all we were picking up, how many tires or rims or roll bars or rear ends or planetoids or parts, he's like, "There's no way. There's, there's no way." And uh, I thought he was joking. We did it, didn't we? <laughs> Gave me an inventory of what we're picking up. I I, I was hoping he was joking, but. Uh, I don't know how we did it, but I mean, we, we, we didn't get every piece, every part, but uh, we got as much as you could possibly fit into a 53 foot trailer. Yeah, we let UPS have a little bit of stuff. How much? Yeah. <laughs> hey, so uh, I, I wanted to bring Buddha in right now because, you know, uh, for those that don't know Buddha, Michael Keller. He's a, he's a seasoned uh, crew chief and crew member for a lot of uh, a lot of teams on the West Coast, especially Obsession Racing. Uh, you know, Rick, Rick and Eric Swanson have been past guests of ours, and he's representing Obsessed Wear. But uh, you know, Buddha, you're you're in kind of the same category as Juan, where you're a modern guy going out to you know Terry's shop and learning a lot of new uh, of the old school stuff with maybe a newer approach. So what have you learned from working alongside guys like Terry and Dave? Well, like Juan was mentioning, the history alone is it's baffling. Like I, I'm not as in deep with like the VHS videos that Juan was because I don't know, I guess I just didn't have that, that blessing of growing up with them. But uh, from what I have seen and what Juan has taught me and what Terry has told me the stories of back then and then seeing like like Cyclops, uh, like the original Cyclops in person, those things are just like, wow, like that's what it used to be like back in the day. And uh, just, yeah, mostly the history. Um, I love getting my hands dirty. It, I told Terry like, hey, thanks for letting me come to the shop and just like get my hands on something because I was going crazy. You know, everyone or most people know that the Swansons moved to Idaho. I don't have really anyone here to go and help. So Terry, uh, let me come out. Thankfully. Thank you, Terry. Uh, get my hands dirty, work on something. Um, also hanging out with Juan. Like I've known Juan for a good amount of years and he's a great dude to help, uh, work with. I'm mostly his gopher for the most part right now. Um, I've only been to the shop a couple of times. So I'm still learning my way around the tools and all that, but, um, really just, it's getting my feet wet again. I haven't been able to do shows as a lot of people know. 2020 was a really odd year, a lot of less shows, especially out here in California. So just any chance to go out there and be a part of anything monster truck, I'll take it. <laughs> what are we out here? So, uh, you know, we mentioned you do work for obsession racing and Rick Swanson is a very unique breed, and I, hopefully Rick's going to listen at some point here. 
What's the biggest difference from working with Rick and Eric compared to Terry? Oh, you got to put me on the spot like that. Yes, I am. <laughs> or Buddha. Um, I feed better. <laughs> how, I don't, how, how can I word this? Um, obviously, everyone has their own way of doing things. Uh, Terry, Terry's mind definitely jumps from thing to thing. He'll be like, oh, let's work on this. And then all of a sudden we're working on something else. Like he said, all you got to do is turn around and there's another project right there for you. Um, whereas at like maybe in Swanson Shop, we had our list that, hey, we're going to do this, this, and this. I mean, me and Eric, uh, Eric's younger than me by about two or three years. So it's like having a little brother there that you can goof off with, mess around with a little bit, where it's like, not in a bad way, but Juan's, I would say, like, my older brother, the guy who keeps me in check, like, hey, let's focus, let's get this done. And then after it's all done, then we can joke around and have fun. But, I mean, if we still have fun in the process. But I would definitely say the Juan versus Eric thing, it, it definitely has its differences. Uh, and Terry's just constantly on the go. Rick will, Rick will be here one minute and then gone in another shop. The next minute, his T-shirt shop, he'll be making phone calls, he'll be doing this, and Terry will just be over here working on this project. I think we'll work on this project. And you're like, wait, where did Terry go? He was just here a minute ago. So it's got its, it's uh, similarities and differences, but nothing I can't handle. <laughs> so uh, who's easier, Rick or Terry? Well, he is putting him on the spot. He is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to have a job yeah. yeah. We're seeing who's you tomorrow, easier? so remember that. Yeah. <laughs> who's easier to work with? <laughs> Remember, you fly, I buy. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, honestly, <laughs> neither are hard to work with. Uh, I think I just have that personality that I can mesh with anybody, whether you're like you're a thousand percent on the go, or sometimes you like to kick back, you know, just, we'll get this thing done and then we'll get this thing done versus like, let's go, let's go, let's go. So, uh, Correct. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say at the moment. Rick, only because I've been with him longer, and it's not in a bad way. But I mean, who knows? Maybe another month or something. Like, God, I had it so easy. <laughs> yeah. Sounds wrong about the correct answer. <laughs> There's oh, definitely a lot more to do at Terry's shop. I guess that's the thing to say. Yeah, it's uh, our. <laughs> we have a semi-controlled chaos here. Our list. I make a list. We just kind of throw it out as soon as we walk in the shop, and we just we're just all over the place. I always tell David, especially knows uh, squirrel. We call it squirrel hunting because I'll be on something, and squirrel Juan, found something, and Juan seen it, and here we're doing this, and I go over to do something, and then they got to come find me, and I'm over here messing with this because it's that close to being done, and it's like we're gonna do this or that, and I go, you guys finish that up, I'm gonna work on this. Yeah, the old squirrel saw something shiny thing. We're, I'm all over the place. And, but I just – my biggest thing, I hope everybody has as much fun as I do. It's like it's so hard to be in a bad mood when you're working on this stuff. And it's so easy to, like you say, if you're fighting something, you turn around and grab something else. But it's been great for me. David's always been here for me forever, and, and, he's, and he always comes down and helps out, and I get so much more done. And then with Juan and Buddha, it's like – I don't know. Does it feel like a fresh of breath air? Like exactly, you know, fresh air. Younger, yeah. more energy, and it gives uh, you the energy. You yeah, know, exactly. You get, you get, you get you more, dri more driven. Yeah, and it's just like we get we get more done because we know that everybody's doing something, and you just get more done, and it makes you try that much harder. So it's just like a I don't know. It's like adrenaline rush to have I mean, everybody's in here and stuff's happening. It's just it's great. I love it. Absolutely. So we're going to keep rocking and rolling with the round table here. So Mr. Buddha, uh, thank you for joining us here tonight. I hope you have a lot of fun tomorrow and I'm sure you'll be creeping back in here at some point in the future. We'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate it. See you guys tomorrow. Thanks for coming on, Buddha. Right. See you tomorrow, Buddha. So uh, let's check out some of the fan comments. I know we've had a, there's a whole bunch of people here in the comments tonight. Uh, guys, make sure you're liking and sharing this video. And if you're somebody that's been up and down the road with the Woodcocks or maybe Wand, uh, jump in uh, jump in our feed here. Send us a private message. We definitely love to have you stop by here and uh, share a story or two. So, uh, you know, with that said, let's see you take a look at some of the comments here. 
Uh, I know I saw a great one from one of our past guests, Rick Corsio, and he says, uh, Dave's your brother. I thought you were Dave's dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's probably not a guy out there that can make you laugh as much as Rick. I mean, to the point where your sides hurt, your cheeks hurt, and it's, it's not even somebody you need to know him. He can just, he, he's so funny. He's such a great guy to be around. I remember doing shows with him and forever. I mean, I remember so, some of our great times, uh, back when we were doing the fairgrounds all over Washington and, and, uh, Oregon and all over the place, Rick could always, always make you laugh, always make you have a good time. He's got something to say about everything. So Rick's yeah. always got good he's, comments. You never yeah. know what he's going to come up with or where it came from. He's always got something to back it up to. No matter what you throw back at him, it's coming right back. And he's quick. He's witty. He's, he's fine. Hey, Rick, I'm glad you're watching. Yep. So I also have another one, another old schooler, Randy Lee Wenslowski. He oh, says, yeah, he says, Dave lost all his hair since the last time I saw him. He shaves it off. He actually, you know, he could grow as much as I've got. But uh, I don't know, him and Danny, you know, old Danger Stan, which we got to get him on here when he's times. But him and Danny, I always tell everybody, well, some of us got looks and some of us got hair. So. I've been dealing with that for years. It's a low maintenance deal with me. So Randy, I think he went up to uh, Idaho, moved back to Idaho. That's where he lived when I first met him back in the very early 90s. He uh, came to work for West Coast Promotions. Uh, we are running Unnamed and Untamed and Nasty Habits and, and the tank that uh, got taken away. <laughs> That'll be another story. Good to see you, Randy. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Yep, so got another one here. Uh, actually, I got a private message from Tom Finch. He says, uh, ask Terry about bologna sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Tom is an awesome fabricator. I mean, if you've ever seen anything so great, he's he built some of the nicest trucks out there. He, he built baby Cyclops. You know, we work side by side on Cyclops. Uh, he worked on Unnamed and Untamed, made it the front seat where you drive out of the hood. Um, he did Nasty Habits as the mud bogger. He's done so much nice work now. He's He had an unfortunate accident on a motorcycle, and he ended up in a wheelchair. He builds wheelchairs now. It's called uh, – you might have to correct me. I think it's Inch Adaptive. But uh, I guess I should know that. Sorry, Tom. But anyway, uh, you look him up on Facebook. He builds wheelchairs for, like, the X Games and stuff. I mean, he's got pro athletes riding his wheelchairs that are winning. It's amazing, his craftsmanship. It's just so perfect and beautiful. I take him stuff all the time still. Have him do all the all the aluminum. and I mean, he fixes things. I'm like, man, I, I'm going to – I could – Maybe get this, but I'm going to take this to Tom. Tom will fix the rams and TIG stuff. They're just he's such an awesome welder and such a great fabricator. He's He's got to get out here. He's going to redo the original rims on Cyclops, I think. We'll uh, get him all set up out here to do that. And he's going to have to come out of here one of these times and get on one of these uh, saloons with us and talk about stuff. As for the peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> we would be – working and driving and, you know, building and then driving stuff to the shows and working. And it was literally peanut butter and jelly. That was the good times. It was the bologna without cheese and, you know, stuff for the rubber times. We spent a lot of, a lot of days, bologna or peanut butter and jelly. There was no, no steak. Everybody always says it's autographs and sunglasses. Well, we, we definitely know the other side of it. <laughs> The comments keep coming here. Uh, where are we at here? Uh, got another one here from our friend Mankind, Drew Epler. Uh, this might be a little closed doors, but it says here, uh, did Terry uh, buy Living It Up, a.k.a. Walking Tall? Did I buy what? Did you buy the Walking Tall truck? Um, where's that? I'm not Can't familiar with that one, bro. No, there's no picture. Just oh, yeah, just a comment. I don't know. That's uh, 
There's you know, so many different there's trucks going around. I get people messages. I mean, like, like I show Dave all the time. On sometimes there's 15, 20 messages a day. Did you buy this? Did you buy that? Did you buy this? Did you buy that? I think anything that sells now, there's, you know, I'm not the only guy out there buying trucks, but there's, uh, it seems like every time a truck sells or goes up for sale, because I get tagged on everything or people screenshot it and message me or share it to my messenger and stuff. Well, I don't care if it's a roll bar or if it's a, a planetary axle or a five ton axle or an intake or a blower or, you know, or a truck. I get, I get a lot of tags. So I think there's a lot of people that are just assuming I'm buying a lot of trucks that are being sold and, I mean, there's a couple trucks I tried to buy, and I don't know who got them. There's somebody else out there doing some stuff, but uh, there's stuff out there that I've been I've been beat to the punch on it, and people have gotten it before I got my hands on it. But uh, thank God, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've got a pretty good selection right now. Yeah, there's a lot, but yeah, it's uh, it's funny to see the messages. As soon as you see something up for sale, I go to my my messenger, and there's so many people have already shared it to me or sent it to me. And I appreciate it because a lot of those times I hadn't seen something yet and I bought it, you know, roll bars, front bumpers, tires, just different things. I'm always looking for the old six ply, good year, small letter tires, but I don't want them dry rotted and cracked. And that's, that's tough, but I mean, I don't want to air up a tire that I can't trust. So I'm kind of picky on a lot of that stuff and, a lot of the old stuff I'm always looking for. But take, yeah. Take some of the hunting out when somebody tags them with, with parts that we actually need or have been looking for. Yeah, it's great. And it, and that's the thing about some, some people I know well, some people I don't know very well, but they've been great tagging me. So I'm definitely not complaining about the tags. I'd rather have 30 tags a day on the same thing than have nobody tag me and be something I need or want that I'm looking for. I mean, I'm, I might sweat a little. Because I'm yeah. like, oh, here we go. We're about to get really busy around the shop. Yeah. <laughs> or more busy. Yeah. There's nine containers and about eight semi trailers <laughs> jam-packed full of the seams with stuff. And the shop's jam-packed full of the seams. Mm -hmm. Outside's jam-packed full of the seams. There's, it's, it's a good thing I can't stack these straight up because <laughs> at some point, I guess, I guess we better start building and quit buying. That's what this last trip Terry is like, I have found it, paid for it, now we just got to go pick it up. Yeah, we got a few things sitting around. One of these days I need to just put out some ads so people will pick up some stuff. Double, triple roll bars, and the people have been great. I've had so many people help me get roll bars picked up from town, taken somewhere to somebody I know. I mean, Adam Gates has always been a great place to drop stuff off at, and uh, so many guys – all over the place willing to let stuff get dropped off of the shop so we can get it or get it shipped or get it picked up or something. Uh, everywhere, everybody's always been, been a lot of help. Always and A lot of the original yeah. true to the era stuff, not uh, uh, replicas and, and, you know, uh, OEMs type stuff, uh, stuff that was actually used during uh, builds of these trucks uh, originally. You can pick it up, uh, I don't know, second hand, not second hand, but uh, replica of like the roll bars and the uh, KC lights and don't stuff want, like that. Don't want <laughs> Got to be the real stuff, the old school stuff. All of it's the same, just like some seats, you know. You, you might not find it in great shape, but there's certain sets of seats I need for certain trucks, and I want those seats. I may have to have them reupholstered. If I get lucky, I can find some that somebody stuffed away and didn't do. Every now and then I'll find somebody that had a project or a dream and it didn't get finished, and I can come in and buy them out. And those are where I'll end up with half a truckload of stuff I don't need or a couple parts I do need, uh, but kind of it's whatever it takes to get what I need. Definitely stay busy. We have a comment here from uh, Brian Northup, and he says, is it true? Terry used to be 6'9 before he started jumping monster trucks. <laughs> That's Frank the Tank right there. And he's one of my bosses, I'll tell you what, a great guy to work for. Love him oh, to death. Man. So much fun hanging out with him and stuff. Uh, yeah, 
I was six foot nine, and I used to actually walk upright, and I didn't make all the noises I make when I get up now. Brian, glad to see you out here watching this, man. Can't wait to get back to work. Can't wait to do another project with you. Absolutely. So we have another uh, fan comment, Vincent. You want to pull it up from Angie? From uh, Angie Woodcock, and she says, "I was Dave's pit crew working for Jimmy. Then we went and ran for Bigfoot. Had truck tired down, and all he had to do was load the truck." He has told me that so many times. I'm so impressed, and and she did. I've seen it. Yeah, there's a lot of guys after. Uh... After the show was over and we'd go up on the concourse or go do autographs uh, at the novelty booth or whatever, uh, somebody would hear a truck fire up and they're like, is that your wife? And I was like, yep, that truck will be tired down and all I got to do is back it in. I, she, she was awesome. She was a hard worker. Uh, she loved it as much as I did, but uh, it was always good to have uh, – uh, second set of hands and and the work she did was invaluable it was uh, it was good to have a crew on there that, uh, that you happen to be married to <laughs> you're married to my sister yeah yeah Sis. so uh, well I guess I'm reading this next one here so uh we have another a couple comments here from Jamie O'Keefe. She says, "Hi Terry, I miss you. You know, you're always a big brother to me." And then she says, "I still remember the day that Danny broke his back." Yeah, Jamie, she was she was a, like a little sister, and you talk about a great couple of people to work for. Her parents, J and J Motorsports. We did so many shows for them. Always enjoyed it. They treated you so good. You had such a good time, and. Uh, yeah, I remember. I don't know she was probably 10 or 11, 12 back then when we were running the wrestling trucks. <laughs> like a little sister, I always watch out for her. Uh, and uh, it's always nice to hear from her and hear from her mom and her dad. And uh, it's all, it was always so much fun. I wish guys like that, I wish they were back out there doing the shows. I'd love it. We, we did Redmond every year. For, and we did, yeah. uh, well, we did Washington and Oregon shows for them, and they did – we did several. I remember parking the hauler in their backyard once when yep. we had the big. We were running the Bigfoot truck and running. We had two haulers back then: the Bigfoot motorhome and trailer, and then we had the uh, black motorhome. Sammy's got now, mm -hmm. and we had the Generation X and the Bigfoot. And I don't remember what other truck we had. The Hammer, maybe. I don't know. I think that came a little bit later. Yeah, but yeah, they just people like that. They let us park the rigs there because. We might have a couple weeks off, go back to Bakersfield because we weren't going to go back and do nothing or relax. So, no, we're going to drive all the way back to Bakersfield so we can finish or start building the next truck. It never ended. There was never a, okay, we're done, <clears throat> relax. Now, yeah. people like that make it so nice to be out on the road. And there's so many people like Jamie and her mom and dad that, that treat you so good. I mean, home cooked meals. Fresh cookies, just treat you like family. I mean, you are family. It's, That's exactly. They make you a part of their family, and yeah. and you got some place to stay, some place to hang out with while you're out on the road. And, uh, it's always good. I mean, there's a bunch of people like that out there, and uh, I don't know. We call them fans. I call them family, friends, fans. Some of them start out as fans, become exactly. friends, but it's just it's. It's great when you meet people like that. It just makes it all worth it. When you're out there on the road, you know, you're missing home and you're missing a home-cooked meal. And you just, it's nice to come across people like j, j Motorsports. So let's transition and talk about some WWF monster truck stuff. I know you and Dave have plenty of stories with all that. So tell us about the wrestling trucks you guys ran. I would say uh, I'll let Dave talk for a little while, but I will say real quick that was probably the best three years that we had. It was very good. Yeah, it was it was a busy busy time uh, when I first uh, started running with Terry. Uh, he had uh, Shawn Michaels' Heartbreak Kid, and uh, 
and we were he was looking for another identity to run and with uh wasn't it titan motorsports uh it was the uh entity that that managed the wrestling trucks and uh they suggested doing a uh, after we had met they suggested doing a uh, steve austin truck which to me i wasn't uh uh really knowledgeable about uh, all of the the, re- uh, the wrestling personalities. Burn out, sit down in front of dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, we were at a truck stop and we looked in one of these wrestling magazines and saw a picture of Steve Austin and uh, Stone Cold. And I was just like, that's why they were suggesting that because, you know, just had shaved head, wore a goatee. <laughs> And uh, I, it fit, and it was it was some of the busiest times. Uh, we, I think, when we debuted the truck was uh, Wheeling, West Virginia, and yeah. it was a Friday night, Saturday night show. I don't think there was a matinee show on Saturday, but uh, Friday night we sold all the novelties out that we had. Uh, and uh, we couldn't keep up with the with the demand. We didn't realize how how popular uh, Stone Cold was. Like Asheville, North Carolina. Asheville, North Carolina. We uh, we did the same thing. It was Friday night. Uh, we sold out, yeah. and Terry had uh, uh, pallets of uh, novelties, t-shirts, hats, pictures uh, flown in. I had a thing. It was it was by. Intermission of the first day of a three-day show. I still don't know. I never saw anything like it in my life. We were at over twenty thousand dollars in novelties by by intermission and out. We totally sold out. And we usually priced our t-shirts five dollars more than anybody else's. And uh, they sold the Stone Cold thing was unbelievable. Like it was so it was neat when we went to the rest of the matches and got to hang out with them at their gigs. They'd come to some of our stuff and sign autographs with us. And, and to get to know them and, and uh, see some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. You know, they tried to get us to wrestle, and uh, Shawn Michaels offered us to go down to his uh, wrestling school. I think it was San Antonio. Wrestling camp, yeah. yeah and I told him, I don't know part of that because I watched them go out there all pumped up, and they come back. You know, as soon as they come through that curtain, they're like, oh, my knee's killing me. Oh, my shoulder's killing me. But those guys, I mean – People can say whatever they want, but you talk about athletic and uh, to be able to do a backflip off a top rope and hit a guy in the face with an elbow and not actually really hurt him bad. Right. A lot of talent. Our dad loved wrestling. And uh, if if you wanted to get pinned to the ground real quick with your leg wrapped up around your ear, all you got to do is say it was staged or something. (laughs) He was an avid, loyal wrestling fan. No, it was fun to watch all the other uh, personalities come to light, too, uh, uh, with uh, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, uh, Undertaker. Um, it was uh, some good friends of ours that, that ran those trucks as well. And uh, Rex Smith started with the Undertaker. Yeah. And, and, uh, it was a lot of fun, man. I'll tell you what, there, it was just you brought in a whole new breed of uh, fans into the monster trucks by bringing in the wrestling fans and you saw a real loyal, hardcore fan. Um, I'll tell you what, like some of the people that remind me of that is, is like Christopher Allen. He's so knowledgeable on the sport and so knowledgeable on, he knows more about my trucks than I do. I mean, there's guys out there. I was about to say, that guy knows more than we do. Yeah. J- Jason Rivas constantly comes up the things I forgot about and we talk about things and I'm like, I just don't know how anybody can store that much information. But a lot of those fans remind me of like Christopher uh, because Christopher Allen was just, oh, he always knows, he just knows so much about the trucks, knows so much about the wrestling, knows so much about all of it. Yeah, Very so uh, I, I know Chris is watching, that's why I'm going to jump in here because he was uh, asking earlier uh, talking about the uh, popularity of those wrestling trucks and how did it affect uh, your guys' popularity? I think you really hinted at that. You know, this is it's such a peak having such iconic brands on your trucks. 
and you out going out there representing them every weekend. It, it was. I mean, it made us very popular. The trucks were booked. We were doing minimum of 48 different venues a year, running all over the country, uh, being paid good money, um, making a lot of money off novelties. We were able to run a lot harder. We could afford to tear stuff up because – we had that extra income of higher paid shows and novelties and everything else. And I say it was neat to meet the guys and see what they were like. Cause they're all just basically like us. They're just, you know, making a living, putting food on the table and a roof over their head, but they worked hard at it. They were passionate about it. It was uh, always, always a lot of fun. I remember times people would argue with us because if David's down on the floor standing in front of stone cold and I'm down on the floor standing in front of, Shawn Michaels Heartbreak Kid, we did resemble them a lot. And uh, I think that a lot of the promoters played on that. And definitely a lot of the announcers played on that. And then you'd go to do autographs and you would have to argue with people and tell them, I'm not Shawn Michaels. And he's going, I'm not Stone Cold. And, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun, though. It was, all of it was just a, a great time. I didn't know that much about wrestling either, just like David said. But, but man, we uh, we ran with it, and we were, we were able to run the trucks so hard. We were always – I mean, there's so many times it was Dave and I in the finals and never knew which one of us was going to get it. I know David win, and he'd go – it was always my famous saying. He goes, ah, I won that one. And I'm like, I got paid for two trucks. I won that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It definitely affected affected our popularity and affected the style of racing and driving we were allowed to do, which was we didn't show up to do anything but take first and second place, period. We were, we were there to win. And, I mean, doing some great freestyle back – you know, back then freestyle wasn't like it is now, but you pop the front end up and wheel it across the five or six cars and drop it down the other side, turn around and do it again. It, it got the crowd going. No, it definitely put a kick of uh, adrenaline in us. Uh, not that uh, racing and, and freestyle on a monster truck ever gets boring, but uh, it really, we found another gear uh, with the wrestling trucks. And uh, we started running harder. And uh, the popularity was there. Um, it, was, it was a great time. Yeah, we could afford to do what we wanted to do, which is it's always nice when you can. I mean, I know a lot of independents that are like me, too. You still have to make money to be able to afford to run a truck. You don't have a multi-million dollar company behind you, so you, you got to drive you know, with your wallet, not so much your foot. But we didn't back then. We got to drive with our foot, and, and it was all out, and it didn't matter what happened. We roll the truck over. We fiberglass it back together that night. The next day, finish touching it up, and and go back out and do it again. We didn't never rolled on purpose, never wrecked on purpose. Always lined up to win. No, it was it was always. Uh, I mean, there's a there's a price with with running hard, racing hard, freestyling hard, and that's uh, working all night to to get whatever you you tore up uh, fixed. We've had uh, fans come down and said, yeah. I, you know, a friend of mine or a family member, somebody somebody came to the show last night and, and said that you rolled over, and it was uh, it was good to see that your uh, hard work paid off because you, you really couldn't tell from the Saturday show. Yeah. Duct tape and spray paint. You had people arguing with you. There's no way that truck rolled over last night. <laughs> yeah, it rolled over. From 20 over. feet, it looked good. Up all night doing fiberglass and, and building new mounts. and itchy. <laughs> yeah. Growing up, I actually I actually have seen them drive, which is kind of cool. And from a fan perspective, uh, you know, watching, you know, loving monster trucks and all. But then back in the day, also, you know, love watching wrestling and having those those two things combined. I mean, that's I'm like, I'm bugging my parents like I want to go see monster trucks, monster trucks. And then, you know, so that was pretty cool. And, you know, as, as a fan, you know, seeing that and and. You know, now I guess being side by side next to them and working side by side like with them every day or every weekend, that's pretty cool. And that's the same exact thing that kept us going. Guys like Juan and, and Buddha. Yeah, the newer generation of um, 
people that come along that, that were fans that followed it and loved it, and now they're drivers and now they're involved in the sport and coming here and helping us and stuff. I mean, sometimes it sounds cliche, like people don't believe it, but when you can hear that crowd cheering for you, you really do drive harder. And when, when you know they appreciate it and you hear that, it just it brings that much more out of you. It really does. And when you see the people screaming and yelling and waving the flags and waving their arms and, and talking to you at the autographs and coming back the next day to watch the same show again, <clears throat> it – it gives you the feed up. You do big time. Yeah. You know, that that's a good point. I'm happy, uh, Juan, you brought that up. That was actually going to be my next question. You know, if you grew up being a wrestling fan and how those trucks, you know, interacted with you and, you know, personally. And, you know, you, uh, you know, back to the trucks himself, you guys weren't the only wrestling trucks. Uh, there were, you guys weren't the first and you certainly weren't the last. So how did that coexist with maybe some of the other teams that were running – uh, related bodies. So, uh, you know, where, where, where was that? Where was the line drawn in the sand there? Well, in that era, of course, Bigfoot had some stuff going on with the Hulk truck and uh, things like that a little bit. But the first truck to come out was Mark Wheeler with uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. And then we got the second and third trucks, which was the Sunny truck and the Shawn Michaels Heartbreak Kid. And then we ended up changing Sonny to Stone Cold. And then they came in with an Undertaker and Rex Smith. And it kind of grew from there and it just kept growing. And I was, I mean, I was good with it. There was enough for all of us when we were doing that. I, I did feel a little uncomfortable or maybe a lot uncomfortable when they started when they saw the value of the Stone Cold, they started bringing out multiple trucks, and I have absolutely nothing against anybody else who ran them, nothing against anybody else who got that opportunity because I was glad to get it, and I'm sure they were glad to get it. But I kind of felt like they were going to wear it out, you know, and it was coming to the end of our three-year contract when started seeing them popping up, a, what I felt was a little bit too much. Um, it was still great for the fans. More people got to see the truck because of that. It didn't affect our shows. It didn't affect our popularity. It didn't affect our pay, our novelty sales, or anything like that. And those are the things that made us get to run real hard. But we had really good quality trucks that held together very well, and we could run them really hard. So even when we were up against the other wrestling trucks, I, I think everybody had the same mindset we did. We were able to run the way we really wanted to and sometimes couldn't afford to. And, there was, at the end of the contract, we chose not to try to resign and go with any more time. We felt like, you know, we we rode that wave. We got the best out of it. We did real well with it, but it was time to move on. And then there was a couple other trucks that lingered for a little bit longer, not very much longer, I don't think, before they pulled the deal. Well, we're uh, going to bring in another person here uh, to ask a couple questions here. Uh, another person jumped in our DM, so make sure if you want to jump in the stream here and be a part of the uh, conversation, send us a private message. It's another one of our past guests, another one of the modern guys in the business, uh, really learning a lot from guys like yourself. I'm sure he's got some great questions here. From the Crash Test Dummy Monster Truck, it's Dallas Glenn Rogers. Dallas, thank you for joining us. There he is. How's it going, Dallas? Hey, how's it going? Having a little bit of trouble hearing Phil, unfortunately, but... You know, it's been a long day, but three absolute legends in monster trucks, and it's awesome to, to see you guys. And, of course, in the background, what a legendary piece of equipment right there. I mean, that's, my childhood. That's when the I, star right I, there. That's... That comes to my mind. I mean, that was definitely a favorite of mine growing up, and it's definitely cool to see something like that returning back to action. Yeah, we love it. We, we got offered a few different tanks. We've been offered some since we got this, but there was really and nothing nothing against any other tanks, but this is the one and only tank I was really after when oh, I got it. So we felt, we felt very fortunate. So how are you guys doing? You guys uh, staying busy like always, huh? Oh, every day is a new adventure. And, in fact, let's see. This morning it was uh, – 5 a.m. before 5 a.m. in Georgia, 
we were leaving for the airport and so now back in port orchard washington and getting ready for some more adventures and more stuff to get done you could have had a two-day layover in bakersfield you could have <laughs> came true. here to the fun toy shop don't do it <laughs> well, i'm still trying to get juan to come back up here because last time juan was up here we got to go see uh, Seahawks game and have all kinds of fun. So looking forward to getting it. Man. Well, Juan's going to come up as soon as we're done here. <laughs> That's uh, who knows when. <laughs> but, so how's that new truck doing? Oh man. Well, right now it's doing well. It's it's safe. I haven't been yeah. running. That means I haven't been breaking it too badly, but. <laughs> Still uh, looking forward to having some fun with it, just waiting for things to pick up. And, of course, working, saving up some money, and that way I can go out there and have as much fun as possible. It was great seeing it. I love seeing it when I come up. I know everybody was like, I just got a wild hair, and I threw them parts in the back of the truck. And I said, I don't deliver nothing for free, but I'm like, I got to go up and see this thing. And what you guys did up there was just – so inspiring. It was so great. That entire neighborhood, oh, that whole community. I don't know if they realize how lucky they have it with you guys, what you did. I mean, you know, everybody's going stir crazy, stuck in their homes. All those kids are bouncing off the walls. The parents are pulling their hair out. When you guys put together an event like that, free of charge, rides, all the monster trucks, everybody tired everything up. It was great. Plus, I got to eat for free. So, you know, that was good. That's always good. Yeah. It was really cool, and the community absolutely loved it. And it was an uh, idea of Bill's, and it was one of those things, like, we weren't sure how everyone would take to it. It was something different, but it was something that the community needed because, like you said, people were starting to go stir-crazy. And I think at that time there was one person they said that when they went to it, uh, it was like the first time in four months that they left their house. And yeah. That was just mind blowing, but just, you know what? Yeah, I just walked uh, around here, listening. To the it you were breaking up a little bit. I was saying I just I was just walking around listening to the comments, listening to the parents and the kids and stuff. And I don't know how much of that you guys got to hear, but I was just like nobody there walking around listening to it. And, and there was a lot of great remarks made from people and very grateful people and i don't know how much they expressed it but i heard it and i can tell you that it was definitely something that was i mean i'm sure that'll never be forgotten in that area those people did appreciate it and it was it was neat it was neat to see that happening and to see that you know community come together like that and everybody have something to do to say you you guys pulling that up i was i was very impressed i i just came up there to kind of see everybody and say hi and I used it as an excuse, you know, to come up, and I was so glad I came up and so glad I got to hang out and check oh, everything out. It was awesome seeing you there, and it was one of those things. I was so surprised when seeing the Facebook comments from the community because out of the hundreds of comments, I could not find one negative comment. And so to me, that was really cool. Just, I mean, everyone in the community, it was all smiles. So that – to me is the most rewarding part of it yeah definitely it's it's part of the thing that keeps us all going i know you know dave and i have worked all night and i know Juan's worked all night and i know we've all helped each other before Juan's came and helped me when i broke my truck at a race and david and i have spent many nights up all night long and and that's stuff that keeps you going you know if you think you're just oh we'll deal with it tomorrow no we're gonna do the best we can and we're gonna get it fixed tonight so tomorrow those people that bought that ticket and those people that enjoy that show, they get their money's worth. And when I say it drives you and seeing, just hearing those people talking and those kids just, I mean, like losing it, just so much excitement. You know, it's, it was great. It's, it's the stuff that keeps us going. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that's the coolest thing about it is just like I always say, the business of smiles and there's no better business to be in than the monster truck industry just because, the end result you see everyone's so happy they're not worried about any problems they have at home or at work they're all about enjoying themselves with their family and friends yeah it is it's great but 
no, seeing uh, the tank, that thing is so cool because I remember as a child seeing that, I think it was uh, Monsters of Rock and Roar VHS tape. And yep. see, it caught me. It's like, I know. <laughs> yep. And so it's awesome to see that it's still around and definitely something I want to travel to Bakersfield and see one day. Yeah, don't slow down on 99 <laughs> when you come through here because some people came here years ago and never left. And when we get you in here, you're, you're definitely going to spend a couple days. You know, you can see this right up close, really close. Absolutely. And, you know, it's been a while since I've been to Bakersfield. And, I mean, I'd love to go there, check out everything, and hang out with Juan, of course. Oh, yeah. It's been it's been a few weeks now, or well, a week. <laughs> but no, Juan's always one of the funnest people to hang out with, and, and can't wait to see all of you guys tearing it up. And last time I, I seen Dave drive was probably in Monroe, Washington, at Evergreen Speedway. I think driving Bigfoot. Yeah, mm -hmm. but always lots of fun. I got him in Cyclops down in Texas last year. Right there. He fit right into one of the old suits or the yellow one. I can't remember. No, the, uh, I think it was the blue one, wasn't it? I don't know. That blue suit. That was, blue suit has gotten, has more drivers uh, gone been. through that yeah. suit. Had to take my name off of it and sew a sticker on it or sew on a patch that said Freedom Racing because so many people were in that blue suit. But I was thinking you're in the yellow one, but maybe the blue one. It's yeah, we got to get back out there. I can't wait for this to end so we can all go out there. And I mean, I'm looking forward to going out there and, and, and putting on a show and hearing the crowd again. And, you know, if it means working late into the night, so be it. I'm willing to do that. I, I want to get back out there. Oh, absolutely. I think everyone in this industry wants to. And But something like when you were talking about that fire suit and how just one fire suit could have so much history just makes me think about what other things there are in this industry and one thing that comes to mind is that one uh, body that was on Scott Anderson's shattered truck. And if I remember correctly, it started out, I think, as one of your bodies, an earthquake body or something. Yeah. That, well, the earthquake was a Ford. Okay. I think that one was the bad boy one okay. that Todd Frolic had painted. Uh, that's what, when Todd came to work for Freedom Racing, I mean, he was a mud bogger and he, he had this. He had this black Bronco. It looked beautiful. And then he had this Jeep. It was like yellow and purple, if I remember right. And everything Todd had was shiny and beautiful. And I'm like watching this mud bogger, and, you know, and going. Got to talk to him a little bit and uh, just watched watched him in action, watched what he did, or, you know, really respected the way he took care of his equipment. He just out of the blue, I go, hey, you uh, want to be a monster truck driver? And he looks, and I mean, bright-eyed, he's like, are you serious or something like that? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, Oh, I'd love to. I said, all right, I'm going to be coming through. Uh, I think it was Ben, it was Biggs Junction. And he lived right there, up there by Biggs Junction, Oregon, Washington, right on the border, 97. And I literally told him I'm coming to get you. And I pulled off the side of the road right by his dad's shop. I think it had a towing company and paint shop or something up and, on the hill. And, uh, Pulled off the side of the road. He threw his bag in. He jumped in, and we were gone. And I mean, that was a that was a great summer. I think we went three or four months wide loading both trucks on the trailer. Never tired them down. We were all over Washington, Oregon, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming. We got all we got all through the United States that are down, you know, on the West Coast. And I think they finally popped us when we were coming out of Arizona into New Mexico at that scale. Uh, when we were headed in, yeah, we were headed in uh, westbound, and they said, this is a reducible load. And we're thinking, we had a pretty good run, like four months without taking the tires off. <laughs> and so we busted the tires off and continued on our way. But I had a lot of fun. I mean, Todd would break out his little airbrush and mix the paint. You know, where me, I'm going to wash it and wash it a little harder. Todd's going to scuff it and paint it. And he had everything looking so good all the time. Uh, he was he was a great driver. Obviously, he went on you know to, to work for Fred Schaefer with Barefoot, and then he went on to drive Gravedigger. We got to get Todd on here one of these days. Got 
got some great stories. He's a great guy, real talented, uh, great driver. And I don't know if anybody realized how good a painter he was, but man, that guy could paint. He painted that body. We, uh, we were worried, I think, a little bit. We were maybe going to get in trouble from Harley Davidson. But we already got in trouble for a couple of names. So I think it actually said hardly da- dangerous on the side. And it was the Bat Boy truck. But that's the body that went on to become so many different trucks. And it's still out there today. I think it's on the Quake or something. Now. Yeah, I think California Quake, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still out there. Okay. Yeah. Still got Zach's custom airbrushing on the grill. That's how you can always tell that one, you know. So of all the identities that you ran on trucks, what would you say has been your favorite? I mean, I think we just, I mean, really, obviously, I always, you know, hearts, hearts with Cyclops big time. Uh, so many different versions of it, so many different things. And, uh, and uh, we're actually uh, revisiting some other ideas with Cyclops. Just real recent that came up. Yeah. But, I mean, the wrestling trucks, I don't want to keep talking about money, but you can run so hard when you're making the money. And that, that Stone Cold truck was a game changer for Freedom Racing. It was just a huge game changer. It made us be able to do whatever we needed to do to get in the finals. I would hate to have to. I had, there's just so many different cool names and cool trucks. Uh, Earthquake was always one of my favorites. The paint job, the cracks in the rims, it was cool. But I'm going to have to go. With, I still got to go with Cyclops. Earthquake had one of the craziest, most hit paint schemes of its time, definitely, even still today. There's a lot of detail in that. It had all the broken, because that was right after the, the earthquakes down in L.A., and uh, had all the broken freeways and everything, and it had the sign and, you know, the exit sign said Ed's 4x4 repair. And I'll tell you, that's that's somebody that needs to be talked about a lot more in this industry and stuff is Ed Gerber and Ed's 4x4 repair. And, you know, Pat's gone on to do some great things with direct off-road, and he's uh, gotten a lot of parts from me and helped me out with a lot of different things. Uh, Ed, you could, couldn't imagine the amount of trucks that were at Ed's 4x4 repair. I got hit with the zoning company when I was building the wild thing and building Fire Dragon. And they said, zoning said I couldn't build them in my backyard. And I lived down in Rosedale. So I went over to Ed's and asked him. He's like, bring it over. I'm like, man, I got, I got a sandblast. I got a paint. I got all this stuff to do. You bring it over. He didn't care what it what it entailed. He was open to it. And I came over there and he gave me a spot to do my building and my work and stuff. And I remember uh, we had a hand bender and buried it on a big piece of channel deep in the ground. And it take three guys pushing on that thing. Everything you got to bend that tubing. And I just always remember uh, all the different trucks that would pull in. Sammy was there a lot. Sam Sturgis, he'd come in with his trucks and. Uh, I remember him having to fix the Linko on barefoot there before. And just, I think that's where I first met Sam. A lot of trucks. Just a, a lot of trucks would come to Ed's 4x4 repair. I'm just so glad to see Pat carry that on with direct off-road. And he's always, you know, open arms. If he can help you, he will. You know, if I needed a place to park, he's inviting me to his house for barbecues. You know, it's always a way to get to me food. <laughs> Anything that's not microwave or drive through yeah. But now Pat's in, welcomed me into his home and uh, and always been there. And it's just it's so gracious to see that because of the things his dad did for the sport. And when, when trucks would come to town, it didn't matter if they needed transmissions fixed or whatever it was. I mean, Ed could do it. Ed could fix anything. And he was willing to fix anything and would help out with it. And he helped me get my wild thing truck, tractor tire truck done. And it was nice because... There was like 19 trucks in that series that ran, and Ed was always in the money, and Ed and I were the only two that weren't uh, blown trucks. I was I was on dual carbs with nitrous, and Ed was on injection, and we were always at the payout window. These guys had a ton of money in their stuff. Ed knew how to make something work, you know, without throwing buckets of money at it. And I learned a lot from him as far as how to – stretch the dollar and how to get, you know, what was important and how to get things done. So.
our guest disappeared there. I uh, don't know where he went. If he comes back in, I'll, at, I'll ask him one final question. Uh, yeah. But if you guys are still uh, <laughs> listening live here, make sure you're sharing this podcast. And if you have any questions for our, uh, our guests here at the roundtable tonight, uh, make sure you leave them in the comments. We'll definitely get to them, pull them up on screen, and I'm sure it'll lead to a, a great story interaction there. Um, man, I'm wondering where Dallas went. <laughs> I noticed he was breaking up a lot, at least on our end. Maybe he had some some difficulty there. Maybe I just rambled on too long. He fell asleep. <laughs> if he's anywhere around the shop, usually there's no signal around there, so that's probably why. He's yeah, no, he's, you got any other somewhere. viewers out there, you know, that uh, – well, I'll give you a sneak peek on where Dallas is. He's 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 in the building. He's just not. Where's Dallas? <laughs> he's somewhere. So, uh, well, all right, here's Dallas. Dallas. Well, Dallas, can you hear me? I hear you, Vincent. All righty, cool. So before you head off, I got a, a question for you. I mean, you and Straight Up Racing have had a pretty eventful week lately. Uh, there was a great big holler fire. So uh, tell us about that. Well, I was actually uh, a couple hours behind, but uh, one of the haulers uh, coming at right out of the wash bay, freshly washed and everything, and then and Dwight was driving, and next thing you know, everything burst into flames. But thankfully, he was able to get out safely. That's the most important thing, the Peterbilt, which was probably every, probably the favorite hauler on the team. Unfortunately, is no longer, but you know what? Semi trucks, they can be replaced, but uh, our friends and family can't be. So the fact that Dwight's safe, he's okay. And amazingly, the trailer is actually okay too, and everything inside of it. So it was, it was a bit scary, but thankfully, everything ended up being okay for the most part. Definitely glad everything was all right. Well, I want to thank you for coming on, Dallas. It was awesome talking to you, talking some stories for uh, the Slim Sit Down, too. We'll see you later. And definitely right. come down to Bakersfield. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking good forward to it. Good seeing you. Thank good you talking to you, man. Thanks for stopping in. Right, bye. Thank you so much, Dallas. Hey, uh, got another awesome fan comment here from Tom Finch. Uh, I'm going to bring it up here on screen. It says, Ed Gerber – was a great man, made the connection for me with Mike West to build the Bud Bog version of Nasty Habit. Yeah, Ed, Ed was. Ed connected a lot of people. Ed connected a lot of dots, if you will. He, if he, uh, if he couldn't help you, he got you something. If you needed something, he found a way to help you get it. I mean, uh, he made Freedom Racing just jumping leaps and bounds, whatever I needed. Uh, you know, he was always there helping. I mean, whether it was building the transmissions, building the motors, uh, uh, getting me the fuel money to get out of town, or his mom making me a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies, sending me out on the road. And the Gerber, the whole Gerber family, and a whole bunch, it just great to be around. Ed was, Ed was one in a million. Well, Phil, uh, is it that time of an hour? I think it might be. Hour, we're already past the first hour, so we're just going to keep rolling here with the saloon. But we have, of course, pictures, so we, uh, we have an intro. Do we have an intro? Yes, we do. Roll that intro. You know the rules, Terry? Explain that photo. Now, this first photo, I believe we showed in the first episode with you, however, uh, now that Dave is here, maybe there could be more light shed. This is a picture. Ah. You remember that one, Dave? Yeah. Tell him about it. Oh, we had gone, I believe this was uh, at a WWF uh, uh, match in San Jose, California, I believe. Yep. And uh, we had been running with uh, uh, Dave Morris and Guy Wood. Uh, God, it seems like it was all summer. We'd go from Fresno to Salinas to uh, Red Bluff, all over uh, southern, central, northern California. And uh, it was one of the matches that we'd gotten uh, invited to, and we went and 
uh, checked it out, watched uh, watched the match, hang out with these guys a little bit, and and see what their world was all about. And it was uh, it was fun time. Uh, Guy Wood, Dave Morris, great guys to run with. Uh, just personalities that you wouldn't believe, and uh, very tough, uh, talented competitors. Yeah, that, that was a fun show. That was a fun night. Well, except for Dave got a citation in the rental car. We won't we won't go to the rental car thing already. Not in not this episode yet. But uh, we had a good time. It was always fun running with Dave and Guy. It was. And then I remember uh, <clears throat> Stone Cold. David's actually a little bit bigger than him, taller. And, and uh, he's looking because I know when uh, when I met Sean, Michael's Heartbreak Kid, he's quite a bit shorter than me. And, He's looking at me, and I go, I guess I can't really say a mini-me, can I? But uh, those guys were great. Stone Cold was great. He loved the truck. He loved the whole thing that was going on with it. And, uh, he, I mean, he took us in like we'd been knowing each other forever, sat around, chatted, talked, and he asked David for his autograph. And I think David thought he was joking, but he wasn't. He wanted the autograph, and he's got the picture there, and he got the shirts, and uh, – we hooked him up, and it was great seeing him every time after that. We had a lot of fun. It was it was a lot of fun going there with uh, with the guys. I think the uh, guy was probably running Bulldozer then, and yeah. and I know Morris was running Equalizer, and that was Salinas at Dave Matthews' show, another one of those promoters that you just wish was still around. You just love working for him, you know, and still love going over to Salinas and working for Randy Smallwood. He always treats you good. I mean, killer tri-tip barbecue. How come I, everything I talk about leads to food? It's making, yeah, me, hungry. making me hungry. I know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was that was fun. San Jose was a good time. Got another photo for you guys right here. Uh, you want to tell them about that, Dave? If I remember correctly, uh, there was uh, some mechanical difficulty. Uh, with Was it your truck? No, they they needed. You were. I know they to be needed Stone Cold to run. Stone Cold was supposed to race Bigfoot. We were in Tampa, Florida, and it was Runky was down there, and it was, I believe it, it was your truck that lost lost something we couldn't fix in time. And at that That's time, right. we, we built all the trucks, all the bodies interchanged. Yeah, all the the cabs, front clips, bedsides, mm -hmm. down to the tailgate. So this was in the middle of doing a body swap. You see the red shocks went with the red truck, blue with the blue, and we were switching it all out So because the promoter didn't care if one of the trucks didn't run. He just absolutely had to have Stone Cold running, and uh, he wanted to see Stone Cold and Bigfoot in the finals, and he did, and they were amazed at literally even stopping to take a picture. It only took us like 11 minutes to swap the body, and they were just absolutely couldn't believe it. No, we could switch it out that fast, but... That was a good thing about those. There was many times I'd wreck a truck and bend up a rim and pull one off of David's truck or vice versa, or whatever. Everything was interchangeable, and it was great. And this is one of those times when everybody wondered sometimes why I was so adamant about everything has to match up. No, that was a good call. That, that saved us several times. Yeah. It was fun. Tampa, a good one. Here's another one. Let me see. So we do have a little bit of info on this one if you need a assist. Oh, is this is this something that maybe Jason sent in? Because he's got pictures I've never seen before in my life. And, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. That that kinda I don't know. You're gonna have to give me some assistance. I believe this was at the San Diego Sports Arena. Hmm. Yes, this came from Rick Yance. He says, Terry slid all the way across the floor, barely uh, missing hitting the overhang, but Digger's crew had their toolbox next to us against the wall. You can see where Terry slid all the way up to it, giving the top edge of the toolbox a love tap. Yeah, I remember that now. I signed that toolbox. After I got after I hit it, I got out and got my Sharpie out and I signed it. <laughs> 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 nice picture, Rick. I, 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 I thought that's what that before. was about. Was that's yeah. where you got 
shut down. Yeah, I was looking and trying to go, well, I'm not, the truck's not damaged and the wall's not damaged. And yeah, I remember that now. That's great. We got another one right here. Oh, yeah. That looks like that might be a Kelvin Raymer shop. <clears throat> Maybe. That was our 1966 trailer that was a 45, and then it was stretched out to a 48, then it was stretched out to a 53. We like my little fuel jug rack on the side. We had a tire lift on the other side of the floor jack in the back. But there's, there's that there's that paint job, the earthquake, that thing was something else. It doesn't look like the rims are painted in that photo. But I think we ended up trying to keep everything the same color so we can swap tires around whenever we needed to and nobody would really know. Uh, yeah, that was my first uh, motorhome. So that would have been, it just, that trailer was still would have been 1996. Six. Yeah, that had to be 1996 when that picture was taken. Here's another one. Oh, yeah. Favorite paint job in the whole world. I, I just, I always loved Wildfoot. Always loved it. And that was man, one of my favorites. Andy could drive that truck to no end. And uh, at that time, I was buying all Bigfoots, actually haulers, trailers, tires, fiberglass bodies, all kinds of stuff from them. Anything they had for sale, I bought. Because I only lived, what, 90 miles from them? Yeah. Yeah. So that was in Cape Girardeau. You know why I know that? Because that's the one and only show that truck ever made because Jim, I can't, Jim Kramer, I think, came to me. I don't know if it was Bob or Jim and said, you're going to have to lose that paint job. And I said, yes, I sir. It was Jim. Yeah. I said, yes, sir. And it happened. I mean, I, I had um, – I really didn't think much of it at the time, probably me just – thinking, well, they retired the name. They're not running it anymore, and it's just a paint job if I put a different name on it. So I put hammer in vinyl. We did white vinyl over it and then put hammer in it to match the color. And it's beautiful. That was the most painful paint job to ever That was paint That, that was along the time we uh, were running the uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Yeah, it was after this we painted it black. Right. And then it was Greg the Hammer Valentine, and he was a fun guy. Those guys, six of them big dudes, would pull up in one car. I mean, it looked like it was a lowrider slammed to the ground, but it was just because they had six 350-pound guys in it. They'd all get out. You know, they're supposed to be arch enemies. They all showed up together in the same car. And uh, Greg was a lot of fun to be around. He was one of the guys that my dad was really into way back in the day before the wrestling got as crazy wild as it did. Yeah, that became Greg the Hammer Valentine truck, and it was. Then it went on to sell. That body went with that truck, sold it to uh, Rex Smith, and I think it became Awesome Kong. Awesome or, Kong. Yeah, and then it was King Kong. One of the trucks that I sold him was King Kong for a, for a little while. And I think he had to change it, but, but I know he ran Awesome Kong. I remember when we went to go pick up that body because I was I was a, a fan of the truck. And to, to actually uh, be in possession of that that body. That's uh, a safe trip. We got the Macho Rand, Randy Macho Man sunglasses and all that stuff. Right, and right. We bought a couple sets of shades, Firestones. And, I mean, just I'd go down there with an empty trailer and we just load it up. I just buy everything that they want to get rid of. We're still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this next one is for uh, Dave. Oh my God! Yeah, this was a stoppy. They they're starting to do that now these days, but they you know. yeah, just trying to take a little little weight off the the rear end there. Uh, no, I came off a stack of cards. I just actually been back at the shop at uh, Jimmy Creighton's, and uh, we'd done a bunch of maintenance. I think we changed the tranny out. We did a bunch of shock work. And, uh, you know, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy has a, uh, mechanical engineer, uh, uh, what, what do you degree? call it? Degree. And, uh, his mind was always working, but, uh, we, we changed out everything, uh, that we, that we felt 
to make it 100% because I was going up to uh, Battle Creek, Michigan is where this was. And uh, it was just uh, the barefoot truck that was booked. So I went up there by myself and uh, came off the stack of cars uh, in a sky wheelie. Came down, loaded up the uh, rear end and the drive line, and it, it busted my uh, rear limit straps. And that was just a domino effect. Everything started breaking from there. Ripped out the rear end, the drive line, the shocks. Uh, wadded the truck up really bad. So that's not a stoppy? No. Well, I, I eventually came <laughs> to a stop. But... Remember when we used to wheel you a bicycle and we used to make the front tire fall off after we pulled the front end up? I yeah. thought that's what you were telling me. That was a show off, stoppy. Well, no, actually, uh, Jesse Berge was there at that show, and uh, Jesse, he could he could throw anything together and he could fix anything. But right. uh, we uh, put that down at the end of the arena and kind of assessed the damage and came to the realization that we weren't going to be able to fix that one. Well, Phil, uh, you got anything else for us? Yeah, I have one more picture, and it's specifically from my buddy Brian. Uh, my buddy Brian Anger wanted me to show this one here tonight, so let's pull it up. Ah. <laughs> hey, that's one big tire. Yeah. <laughs> ah, boo. There we go. The long oh. jokes are coming in. Huh? Yeah, man. You know, growing up, of course, you know, the there's one name that always comes up for everybody's first truck or their favorite truck and it's always you know that big old blue truck bigfoot and uh it has always been a dream of mine to see that truck uh see number one which is uh, i saw that in ontario at that hot wheels uh, drive through which is pretty cool hope a lot of you uh, super fans made your way down there to see that because that was pretty nifty to see that and um uh, you know if you haven't seen none of the straight up racing trucks you know on the west coast i mean that'd be a perfect opportunity and even now that they're over in Atlanta in the east, so a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for people to see the tr uh, see the teams and as well as all the other teams that are up there uh, out there, and that one right there as well, Bigfoot Five. That was pretty cool. <laughs> well, that's all for the pictures tonight, but we do have a video, and we'll play that now. <laughs> So that was a brand new set of tires before that donut. And there was literally chunks flying off of that. That was actually heavy D driving. They were up there filming one of their episodes and uh, invited me up to bring the truck up and tire it up. And then uh, he, I think jokingly said, I got to do a donut in this thing. And I'm like, he's in it. He looked at me. And so he jumped in that thing and uh, whipped that puppy into a donut man i saw a lot of rubber flying off those tires i was just going okay <laughs> now that was one of the videos he probably did about a dozen donuts they did several takes for their film crew it was it was a lot of fun we had a good time yeah there's definitely a lot of fun times when you're out doing a lot of your different projects and there's so many uh closed door projects um you know, I, I think we've asked a question like this before with you, Terry, but I want to get Dave's take on it. Um, is there any projects that stand out in your mind from the past that are now public knowledge that, the, whether like a film project or what have you, that you've enjoyed the most? Um, yeah, well, there's a few that, uh, like you said, we, we can't really uh, talk about, but uh, when uh, – when Terry was uh, uh, restoring the Cyclops, that was, uh, there was just a bunch of pieces, uh, step by step, sandblasting, acquiring the correct parts, uh, acquiring the uh, original parts. Uh, I just, I never thought it would uh, turn out as good as it is. I'm looking at it right now, and it's just a uh, gorgeous truck. Uh, that that's something that it took a while because Terry wanted to do it right, and he's a stickler for uh, for having the the correct parts, and he's been acquiring more and more. Uh, 
as far as doing the uh, the blue truck and the, the red, white, and blue truck and, and just trying to get everything correct and and the original parts. Uh, it's it's pretty cool to see it all come together and uh, and then have people be able to uh, to, to see it. Uh, they'll mention that they had seen it when they were kids and now they're uh, adults and bringing their kids to, to come see it and stuff and things uh, come a long way and it's 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 still working it's still owning its uh, I mean earning its keep yeah it is a little money maker over there <laughs> well, there we go. it was, it was fun sharing that build it was fun showing the pictures and sharing the build as we did it we would love so much more to do more of that but we've got some, some great big plans coming up that you know due to some things that are happening we got to keep you know zip lip and it's hard man it's hard you want to talk about it yeah you, you know yeah. we know the fans are just gonna they're gonna be blown away everybody's gonna be blown away and i got people constantly contacting me <clears throat> guessing and trying to know and well, you could just tell me and <laughs> it's just you know it's it's going to be so awesome. There's so many surprises that people don't know about, but there's so much that we've shared too. So I feel like we're we're giving enough without giving too much. We're going to have a lot of surprises in the show. It's going to be it's going to be very it's going to be very neat. And you know, doing the blue truck, it showed our whole plan was based on showing the capability. And if you looked at that truck when I got my hands on the body. And it was trashed. And then I got my hands on the chassis. And it had been just neglected for so long. Gary Schott is the one that found the chassis for me. And then I finally got lucky enough to get the original chassis and tires and wheels from Jack Caberna. Everybody just working together. It's like a lot of a lot of people, just like now, you know, I was almost going to say all the old timers working together to help me. But it's not. It's everybody, every fan from every age, everybody helping, you know, helping me find parts and getting them moved and getting them down here to Bakersfield and getting them located and, uh, and helping me out. But that blue truck building it proved what our capabilities are with the timeline and with, you are not know, just throwing something together. That's a piece of junk. It's everything we build, we're building it to sit in a museum for the rest of its life forever for people to look at. So, we don't want to slap stuff together and we want things to be correct. I want the original owners of some of these vehicles to just stand there in awe, just speechless and, and uh, just be proud of what we all did. And it's taken a, a village of us. I mean, there's a lot of people pitching in and helping, but I want everybody to be extremely proud of what we've done with their, their legacy, their truck, their design, their, uh, you know, their baby. It's just like, you know, they're all my babies now, but uh, but like Cyclops, I just have so much into it. Tom knows, Tom Fix knows how passionate I am about it. So he is too. We dedicated our life to that truck and so much more. And uh, and I feel like every one of these trucks have that same story. They have a huge story behind them. From it's going to be so interesting talking to each one of those owners, builders, and drivers, and hearing their stories. You know why they tried this and how they tried that and what did work and what didn't work. But, uh, I'm just I wish I could share everything, but I can't, not yet. But it'll be worth the wait. I promise that. Well, we got something for you to share right now, and it's from Dave Gross. He wants to know: Ask Terry about trading show tickets for food and hotels in different towns. Well, heck yeah! I remember we did. I think he's actually talking about Circleville. North Carolina or South Carolina or Greenville, maybe. I can't remember. Um, I was always selling displays. We were selling – David, we were just talking about that. Yeah. I had a pickup truck. I sold a display up around to Larry or Sherlock or something. I got a canopy and and bug shield. And everything you could ever bolt on to a Chevy pickup I got from him for doing a display. Same thing that Dave's talking about here. I went into a buffet that was, I think, right across the street from our hotel. And I told him, you know, normally we charge, you know, this astronomical fee for a truck to be on display, but this is your lucky day. We're going to put the trucks on display in front of your buffet 
And all you have to do is feed all the monster truck drivers and crew for the whole week at your buffet. And they did it. So I got to feed everybody for a week. It was great. I think we all gained a few pounds as young as we even were then. It's still, uh, we got a little sluggish. There was, there was a lot of trips to the buffet that week. Uh, what do we got here? So, uh, oh, where are we at here? Let me pull everybody back into frame here. So, man, uh, always a lot going on in the shop. And, you know, I'll direct this to Juan. You know, you've been there so much. And I know you've learned a lot from Terry and Dave. And we've talked about, you know, how much help you've learned from them. But from a career standpoint, what's maybe the – what's one thing that sticks out in your mind that maybe Terry or Dave has done on the track that you've applied to – your driving or your mindset? Well, with a lot of the uh, uh, opportunities I've had with driving different trucks, I've always uh, enjoyed watching, you know, the, the usual drivers of those trucks and, and just kind of see, I don't know, learn, I guess, how they, how they handle certain situations when they get in a, you know, in a bind or just, no, you know, just making a, no, a normal run around around the track. I mean, watching Terry, um, you know, and Sam, you know, for instance, I see them two kind of going at it with doing wheelies. And uh, I've always loved wheelies, slap wheelies. And I'm mean, watching that at first. I, I when I first started driving, you know, I was working on uh, on on perfecting it, I guess, somewhat. And watching them, you know, I, I can see. Okay, Terry likes to kind of really just send it up high and, and, and bring it down and really get, you know, stomp on it and gets the coolest, you know, just a slap wheelie just going. It's awesome. And then, you know, Sam likes to, you know, just, you know, kind of point it up and get it, just marinate it in the air and then just get it just right. And I mean, the timing is, is just like, okay, I can see, you know, exactly when he kind of goes for it. And um, I mean, I, I pay attention to a lot of that stuff. I pay attention to, to the, the way they kind of have a, I don't know the way they have their suspension set up, but I can kind of see what their suspensions are doing. So as, and when I kind of see that and, and I try it myself or like, for instance, Sam's truck, you know, I get to drive that truck and, and just see how his settings on those, on those shocks work for him and how they feel for me. Like it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just something that it's kind of cool to see. And, and then also, uh, um, just feel it when I'm driving the truck. Sammy's wheelies were always he, – he got so good at it. Him and uh, Ronnie both, yeah. uh, they had uh, – they could they could get, get a wheelie anytime they wanted. It seemed like uh, – it seemed effortless for them. It was like our old trucks. Yeah. It was, just, yeah. It, was, it was so nice to just pull it every time. You didn't go around and try to get it. You pulled around and you got it. Run those steep, the steep, slow ones were always my funnest. The ones I enjoyed the most, the ones that we were teetering over almost backwards. I know uh, I had never hit the wheelie bar until Bill's show in Stockton. Yeah. And I remember getting out and looking because I thought, you know, I felt like I touched the wheelie bar. Because to me, a wheelie's not touching the wheelie bar. You know, you got a free stand, you know, it's just a wheelie. Yeah. Got out and saw all the powder coat rubbed off that wheelie bar. I got my <laughs> Sharpie out and signed it. Like everything, like every time I make a mistake, I got to sign it. But, uh, yeah, those steep wheelies, I love them. And Sam, so good. Ronnie's so good at it. And I've seen you do some epic wheelies, man. I mean, uh, it's just, like you said, timing. You hit down and you just got to wait for just a hesitate for a second. And as the tire starts to come back, you roll into that throttle, stand up. There's nothing better than that feeling of that balance. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched uh, uh, Sammy's podcast earlier uh, from, I think it was December, November or December. Uh, I watched that, and, and like what he had said, if you, you go down and you hit that, uh, that rebound, if you stab it too early, you're not going to get it. If you stab it too late, you're not going to get it. It's just – it's timing and uh, – you know, experience. You got to fail before you succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, growing up, I've, I've, you know, I always tell everybody that I always 
watch their, you know, watch them over and over here in, uh, in Bakersfield or in any other place and watching the videos over and over. And I'm a hands-on guy, so I, I learn a lot by, by watching someone and by doing something myself. Um, so just watching them, you know, all those years over and over and then seeing it in person and just really paying attention to that kind of stuff. And, and I don't know, just then when it comes to actually uh, applying it, I mean, it, it, you can kind of see how hard it, how hard I guess it is sometimes to really get it just right. I mean, to make sure not to blow up a rear end or, you know, twist up a drive line. I mean, a lot of, a lot of times some people think that it's, it's really easy to jump in there and, oh yeah, I can go ahead and just do that. But no, I mean, these guys have done their homework. They've, they've, they've also, you know, done the homework on the truck to really know which way they need to set it up to be able to put on a great show for all the fans. So it, it takes time, time and money. Yeah, that's key to getting a good wheelie out of a truck without hurting yourself. I know I just got rid of my other pair of shocks because I could put them on my truck and I could wheelie it every time. No problem every time. But every time I hit, it hurt. I'm like, okay, you're not smart enough to leave the shocks off. You better get rid of them. So I did because uh, – but, yeah, it's the timing, seeing the rebound and seeing I – mean, when you watch somebody like Sammy, it just does it over and over again. I mean, there was a time a couple of the trucks we had were just so easy to do, and it's, you know, those are my favorite trucks, the ones that we had during the wrestling years and right. during the Generation X right at 2000, and then – I remember you know, the one chassis that they could uh, be testing your radio and uh, shut off the truck, fire it up, throw it in first, and then pull out of your parking spot and go into a wheelie. Yeah, that was that was a 2003 truck. That was that was a wheelie and beast right there. I got the truck we built before that. It just got I called it just boring. I wanted to build a more ill handling truck, harder to drive because that yellow truck. It was like a wet rag in the kitchen or a cat. Yeah. He threw it any direction, any way it landed on all four. You just couldn't roll that truck. You couldn't. That truck handled so well. It worked so good. That was a very yeah driver-friendly truck. So I made the next one very undriver-friendly. I went out the first six weeks and rolled it. First show, that truck was Phoenix, Arizona. Rolled it. Next show, of course, you know, I had such great scheduling there. It was Toronto, California, uh, Toronto, Canada. Went, fixed it from Phoenix, took it to Toronto, rolled it. From there, it was Ottawa, rolled it, brought it back down, and did Tulsa, I think, rolled it. Finished up, you know, took first place upside down backwards, but <laughs> I rolled it like six weeks in a row, and I finally got it. Finally got where I could drive that thing, and it was it was a blast. It was a handful. Well, Terry, I have a question for you. You talk about being the wheelie out of the pits. Do you ever wish you could still do that? Well. We could do it. We could definitely do it. Um, with the chassis I have now, we built it more for what you see going on out there. You know, I mean, it's it's built to take some serious abuse, and it's built for racing. I mean, we stretched the wheelbase, and we did a lot of things to it that, that we don't normally do on our chassis, and it's a great truck, and it, it handles great. You can throw it into donuts. You can grab wheelies on it. You work a lot harder with that truck to get a wheelie, a lot harder. But uh, we've been talking like we don't have enough projects. I've been trying to slowly convince David that we need to build a new chassis like we used to build. Lightweight. Lightweight, short wheelbase, motor back, motor up, because uh, – that's, I mean, that's just so enjoyable to me to, to pull a wheelie all the way across the infield and then you go up and do autographs and that's all anybody's talking about. Nobody remembers who won racing. Nobody remembers who did anything else. But they remember that wheelie from one end of the place to the other. And you sit it down and you just kind of go sliding up, skidding up to the very last second, you know. You use every inch inside that venue. Well, going, going back to that yellow truck, that uh, – you set up a truck that is good with racing it may not be that good for freestyle because the shocks are working too good it's it's too stable uh that truck was so well handling uh that you could do just about anything with it freestyle or racing uh now you set up a truck 
to uh, to do a good freestyle, and it may not handle all that great racing. Go into a corner hot, you're going to end up on your lid. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the yellow truck was uh, Generation X. It was uh, best of both worlds. You could you could race it hard, you could uh, freestyle it hard, and uh, see a lot of the trucks these days. Uh, uh, I've seen guys go out and uh, put in their time on uh, on the floor doing a freestyle, and uh, I know I know a few of them that uh, okay, it's time to put it on the on the lid and, and give the fans a little uh, little excitement as far as that goes. Some of these trucks will not go over. They've tried to put it on their lid, still won't go over. Yeah, but, well, I never want to do. No, no, it happens enough uh, without trying to do it. I used to always say there's only two kinds of drivers, those who have and those who will. But now I say there's three. And there's those who have, those who will, and those who do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I try to stay far from that as I can rolling over. But yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I, I wish I could still do that. We can, but it would require building another chassis. That's the thing about the 2003 truck. I was criticized. Oh, that's a wheelie truck. It's a wheelie truck. But it won. I mean, it took me a, about two months to get a handle on that thing. But it won a lot of races. It won every race I wanted to win. I mean, it, we were racing in Tulsa every year for money. That's, that's Tulsa so was always fun. And nine years straight, first place. <laughs> and that truck, it finished upside down backwards, but it took first place. It was a... It was a fun truck to drive. That's what I want again. I want to have both hands full the whole time. That'll make for a good show for the fans. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, so we have, yeah. <laughs> so we have another viewer in the comments. Uh, she was wondering why you weren't answering her. It's uh, your daughter or your niece, there, Tori. It's my daughter. <laughs> yeah. My niece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His niece, Except my daughter. daughter. Yes. Yeah, that's my reason for breathing right there. Yeah, that's why I wasn't answering, honey. I'm, I'm, I'm at work. I'm at work. Yeah. <laughs> but glad to see her tuned in. Still, still, still like to see her behind the wheel of a truck, but it's just not really her thing. And she's, she's. We've talked about it, and I told her that's fine. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't push her to anything she wouldn't want to do, you know. But uh, I think. Honestly, she would have she would have been a lot of fun, but I think she was more worried about tearing up Dad's truck. And I'm like, well, Dad tears it up all the time, so there's nothing you can do to it that I haven't done. I've tore it up a lot. I think she sees how much it bothers me when my truck breaks, or if I can't finish a show, or if I'm having difficulty with stuff. And she knows how important that perfect paint job and that perfect looking truck. I mean, I'm. I'm an old timer. I come from show trucks. I mean, our trucks were monster trucks and they drove over cars, but they were show trucks. A lot of chrome, a lot of shine, a lot of fancy paint. And I can't get that out of my blood. I mean, that's, I always am going to want to have all these cool things on the truck. So when people are looking at it, they're just, oh, wow, check out that bracket and everything. You just I can't throw one together. It's got to be, it's got to, there's, there's got to be some pride in it. I think that's why she didn't want to drive. It's because she didn't want to tear up Dad's truck. But that's all right. <laughs> well, at least she's honest. So, <laughs> I'll see. I got another question here for Dave. Uh, you know, looking at modern monster trucks, I know we showed that crazy picture of you and Barefoot, kind of doing the precursor to the stoppy. Uh, what's your take on what the current trucks are doing? I know you're not really actively driving, but, you know, well, what are your opinions on kind of where the sport has has turned to and where it's going in the future? So I've seen uh, some of the trucks that are uh, currently running and some of the very talented drivers. Um, makes my back hurt just watching. It. <laughs> but uh, some of the stuff they're doing, uh, some of the stunts uh, are pretty incredible. It takes a lot of talent to uh, – to put a monster truck on two wheels, whether it's the rear two, 
to uh, you know bicycling it or uh, coming up and doing a stoppy. I, you know, when uh, when I was actively running, uh, a lot of that stuff really hadn't come into play. Uh, if you were up on uh, your sidewalls and bicycling it, uh, that generally meant you're in trouble and you're trying to, to drive out from, uh, you know, being on your lid. Unless you were Mike Welch. <laughs> he was bicycling that truck so, so long ago. And he, I would see him hit the cars and bicycle super peak all the way around the track and then finally yank the wheel a little bit, tip it over. Again. That's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, as far as, uh, what what we did, you know, when I was currently actively running, was uh, sky wheelies were were big, trying to get the timing. Uh, Terry always uh, could stand it up on the the first car, and with an uneven surface, uh, driving over a, a a row of cars, keep a wheelie going all the way past it, and then sometimes coming down and going into a slap wheelie. Uh, but the, the stunts that they're doing these days, just incredible. Never even thought about doing some of that stuff. And s some of the air that these guys are getting, uh, again, makes my back hurt just watching it. <laughs> so we have another comment here from a Angie Woodcock, and she says, Dave, tell them about watching Terry doing that awesome backflip. I think we were in Nashville. Uh, it actually, it wasn't uh, uh, a backflip. Uh, he actually was out doing his freestyle and he came off, uh, I think he was first out and he did a couple of, uh, you know, rode the, rode the truck across stack of cars, came down and then put it in reverse and then came up and did just the perfect reverse wheelie, uh, was up on his uh, front wheels and did the same thing in reverse, you know, hitting the same stack of cars uh, backwards. It, uh, I was impressed at that point. I, I think she might be talking about, yeah, that was the show that did that. Maybe it wasn't there a pyramid there? Because the reason I remember that. That's what it was. That's what I've always was. looked up to Gary Porter so much. He's just always been such a. Mr. Consistency. He was always such a nice guy and friendly. And I mean, he's right there all the time. And he come up to me, and because I was still wearing the little the little uh, laminated picture of Tori, she was right. like eight days old, and I'm wearing this thing at the show around my neck, you know. And it's like this is my daughter, this is my daughter, you know. And Tori Lynn, and. Uh, he came up to me after I did that, and he was telling me, that is the coolest thing I have ever seen. And I'm thinking, oh, Gary Porter thinks that, that was cool. And from inside the truck, it was cool, but it was like, it was a pyramid, and I hit it backwards real hard. That's what it was. And I pyramid. stood the truck straight up down over the top, and I was just waiting for the front tires to come down so I could crack the throttle and start bringing it down. And it rode back down the other side on the front wheels, and then – I burped the throttle a few times, so it was it was pretty wicked, you know. And I thought it was pretty cool when I did it, but when Gor Gary Porter couldn't quit telling me how cool that was, I was like, "Wow, that must have been pretty cool." Because I, like I said, I always looked up to Gary, and to hear him compliment me meant it meant quite a bit to me. I your picture, Gary, with his bang. Yeah. <laughs> it was neat. It was it was fun. I remember, uh, I remember that show probably so well. You guys had to change the flywheel, right? Yeah. It was a, it, well, that was because that was the first show I went to after my daughter was born. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think, uh, I think me and Gino were running uh, Barefoot Months Patrol, or Gino might have had Bounty Hunter, and I had Scarlet Band. Yeah, I said Bounty Scarlet and stuff like because I remember just. It was, I remember that show well just because I'll never forget it because I got complimented so so well by Gary Porter and I just thought so much of him. That, 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 yeah, that was a pyramid reverse and then it came down and kept going backwards. You like say it was almost like a stop again. It was a lot of luck, a lot of fun. It was a crazy ride. All I was thinking about is I'm going to rip the roof. I mean, I ripped the hood right off this thing and somehow I didn't. I don't know. It was it was impressive. It was it was a good ride. 
Well, Terry, uh, this is going to be my last question tonight for you. And uh, it's going to be, what's the future for Freedom Racing for the remainder of 2021? Well, like I said, there's a lot of things in the works. There's a lot of huge surprises. There's a lot of big plans. I, uh, I've always been an optimist. I always look at the good side of everything. You know, there's always reality and sometimes tries to get in the way. But it seems like we pull off the things we want to pull off. And we've been – things have been falling into place really well. And uh, I, I can't wait to be able to make some announcements and show some things to everybody. But due to some contractual agreements, got to keep lips sealed on a few things. You know, that's what – that's what Hollywood's all about is uh, the hype and the excitement, the thrill, just keeping everybody on edge and stuff. And it's, it's, I mean, it's got us pumped. We're, we're working real hard and loving every minute of it. Are we? Are we? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're loving every minute of it. <laughs> it's, it's great. Um, well, Freedom Racing Monster Trucks has some, uh, some awesome things coming that are, that are going to, they're going to help the industry. They're going to shine the industry in a great light. They're going to show history and show things. And uh, I, I think I just can't even imagine having any haters with what we're doing. I mean, I always say, you know, sometimes you have followers because they're your friends or your fans or they're your family. Sometimes you have followers because they're just waiting to see you fail. But I don't see any of that with this. I mean, I think everything we're doing, everybody's so excited about it. I get so many great messages from people. Some of them I know, some of them I don't. But everyone's so appreciative of it. And they think what we're doing is so cool, and so do we. And uh, it's just, it's killing me not to be able to <laughs> say some of this taking, stuff. Taking more patience than I've got. It, yeah, it's no, no. so hard. You know, It really is. But then I see, like you asked, what did what has Juan learned from us? Well, what about what? I've learned from Juan, you know, we learned from him, just seeing his enthusiasm and seeing this new breed of driver and and seeing how, you know, how he grew up as a kid following this and watching this and followed his dreams. Just, you know, same thing Jacob did, the same thing. There's so many guys out there that did it and followed it through. And I feel like what we're doing, bringing back all these old iconic trucks and bringing them back to their glory and, and we're kind of – I don't know if you want to say correcting history, but we are we are going to bring the true history to the table, and we're going to show everything as it was. You know, we're not out to, to do anything negative at all. Everything that we're doing, I, can, I just can't see anybody having a problem with it because it's all it's all history. It's all great stuff. They're all, all great fun. trucks. It's, as hard as we're working, it's still so much fun to do, and. and I say I love it when Juan comes by and Buddha comes by. It just you get a lot more done. Dave and I have been hard at it for the last couple of weeks, and it's like right about now we're ready to just just fade out. And it's like we're not going to because Juan and Buddha is going to be here, and it's going to be like, dude, think about how much stuff we're going to get done this weekend. How many <laughs> things we can finish? You know, where do we can get the tank running this weekend? And, Maybe we can get that truck over there running this weekend, and uh, it just it gives you that boost of energy. It gives you that adrenaline shot having these guys come in here and just to see them. You know, I thought oh, I'm just a I was an old timer that's hung up and stuck in the '80s, you know. But then you see the excitement that Juan has, and you see the pride in David's eyes when when we go to get things and pick things up and and see that yeah he's tired yeah i'm tired yeah we're we're working hard but but he sees it he gets it he understands it juan does buddha does uh everybody i've just had so much positive comments from people like i say people are messaging me i don't even know people are messaging me they're friends on facebook and people are messaging me that i've known for a long time and everyone's real supportive everybody's Everybody's loving what we're doing, so I can't wait to get going because it's going to involve all those people. It's just—it's not just going to be a couple of us doing what we're doing. We're bringing a taste of everybody into this. We're bringing people in to be a part of it, and it's, there's going to be some of the greatest stories and some of the greatest, you know, history told and 
how this idea came up and how that idea came up and how you tried this and it didn't work. And if you look these days and guys can jump into a turnkey truck and nothing against the guys and nothing against the trucks because they're great guys, great drivers and great trucks. But probably like Juan looks at some of these trucks and looks at this. I don't know if you want to call it travel or limit of travel, but when you see some of the stuff we grow, probably explains to him why I make noises when I get up and why I walk funny sometimes. It takes me as three or four steps to stand up right. Uh, you know, a lot of us old timers took a big beating for a long time. It's, yeah, a, it's a cush ride now, and I love the new truck. But uh, – but it's just I'm I'm excited. I, mean, I don't even really know. <laughs> I never <laughs> competed in a stage one truck, but I can only imagine uh, some of the guys that uh, that initially built these trucks and uh, what they accomplished with them. Uh, they've, they've got my respect because uh, I mean, there's only so much you could do with them, and it's it's you know it's the progression, the evolution of of these trucks and. And, uh, you know, the guys have built them. Yeah. And everyone's so supportive. I mean, the trucks we're doing, all the original owners that we've talked with and, and the original drivers that have talked to us and the people, they're so supportive of it. You know, Seth, Dalton, Jimmy Reese, they're all, you know, everybody that worked, you know, for Golden State Productions, Steve Helms, uh, Robert Parker. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to draw short on names because I could go on for quite a while. There's so many of the great guys that work for them and they all are excited to see the trucks coming back. And there's just no negativity to it at all. There's nothing to be negative about. These are, these are old iconic trucks and uh, they, they made what today is in this sport. You know, I, I just can't wait for everybody to just be able to look at them all finished. And, and uh, we're, we're going to look at all the, the sweat you know, blood, sweat, and tears that went into it, but I think mean, I think it's just going to be so worth it. Mm -hmm. And we can't wait to see it. You know, we've been along for the ride for a little bit of it, and I know we got so much in store. And I know all three of you will be back on this podcast probably sooner rather than later, and hopefully we can have a small part of it and just keep on enjoying what we know and love as monster trucks. Definitely. We're gonna awesome. have to we're gonna have to get stuff set up where we can do a steady cam and we can walk around. But we got a few things we still gotta hide and a couple things we gotta move around. But yeah, I, uh, we'll get all set up. You know, it's trying to be a little bit high tech here and get a decent shot, a decent background, something cool. And none of us can get over the fact that we're sitting here with this train behind us. I mean, and and Jody Lynn Gaines has been so supportive of this and her sending. Sending us the, his one and only original race suit and his helmet and the shirt that he wore every time he pulled. It's like that stuff, this stuff's going to look so good set up. We're going to set up a mannequin for a museum display. And, and I mean, for her to send us that stuff, it just it gives you chills. I mean, I opened that box and I was like, wow. It's just a helmet that rolled across the floor in Anaheim. When he did the first run with this tank, this is the one and only race suit he's ever owned. And this is the shirt he wore, his good luck shirt, every time. And she's given me her blessing to put that all on when I take this for a test drive. And you can bet I will if I can fit it. <laughs> That's going to be a sight to see. <laughs> yeah. I think that helmet's going to look good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys are keeping the memory alive and no shortage of stories. I know we could talk forever, and uh, that's why we always like to keep them wanting more. I'm sure we'll see you all back here very soon. Guys, thank you so much for joining thank us here tonight. Thank, thank you well, so much thanks, for guys. having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank thanks for everybody. Thanks to everybody for watching. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night. So that is the saloon sit down number two. You know, when we thought of this so many months back, you know, Vincent was cooking it up in his head. He wanted to do something special. And I'm happy that we were able to do another one here. I think Vincent had a very great idea to bring in a lot of different talking heads at different points. And we do want to thank Michael Budakeller and Dallas Glenn Rogers for popping in here and answering the call and stepping into the saloon. Uh, we had a lot of fun here. And it's always 
a blessing to have Terry on board with us. And he's got so many cool things going on. And, you know, he's got so many big plans for the future. And just to hear hear him a uh, piece of his mind and, you know, have his brother Dave on here for the first time and, you know, how much they've had an influence on a guy like Juan, it, it's, it's really special to see. I'll tell you what, Phil. We have never enough time. We have Terry on. There's so much history to share. <laughs> and I'm sure I know for a fact that Terry is going to be back. So for those of you wanting more, there will be more Terry and there will be more history to talk about for sure. There's yeah. so much, almost an infinite amount of history. And like we always say every week, we're not slowing down. We have an episode next Friday. Make sure you turn in live right here. Same place on Facebook. If you can't make it to live, tune in on all the audio platforms. Phil, this is your time right here. Where can yeah. you find us? Yeah, no, you, you got it, man. I, uh, You know, if you're first time listening here, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've talked to Terry multiple times on here. We have the full Terry Woodcock episodes way back in our archives. It's still such a popular episode, so make sure to go back and check that. And as well as our original saloon sit-down, Terry was here with us with Hall of Famer Seth Dolan and a whole bunch of people. Juan Munoz was in that episode as well. You can also check Juan's solo episode as one of the first ones we did here on the podcast. They're all in the archives. You can find them here on our Facebook page. Just go to that video tab, live podcast episodes. Every episode that we've done so far is in there. Also, everything audio only, wherever you can find podcasts. That's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Radio.com, Radio. Pandora, iHeartRadio, all sorts of weird websites I've never even heard of. Every podcast platform out there has got our podcast on it. It's the widest distribution in any Monster Truck podcast. We like to keep it that way. So make sure if you're on the go, you're driving in the car, you're at the gym, you're, you're taking the kids to school, whatever you got to be doing, listening to that podcast, you can find us audio only on all of those platforms. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned, when we did this saloon months back, it was kind of like a, like a, a cut. Like that, like that, that was a chunk of episodes. And then we did a yeah. whole nother chunk and now got another saloon and we're going to have a lot more chunks of episodes coming, really working on bringing a lot of different stories here. Uh, we're always looking for different guests. We got a grandmaster list here. So trust me, if, if you think you got a story to tell, we haven't gotten to it yet. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of older folk on here too. And I, I mean that with a lot of, uh, heart when I say older folk. Because I know technology can be daunting, so uh, trust us. If if you're someone that's not tech uh, tech savvy, don't know how to get around a computer or a cell phone, don't worry. Because if we're gonna come and message you and uh, have you on the podcast, we'll take care of you. We don't ask, you know, gotcha questions. I want to make that clear too, because uh, I think there's some some forms, maybe not in the Monster Truck podcast, maybe some people are trying to get like a, a sound bite trying to make somebody catch them with their pants down. We don't do that. And you can see all the different people that we've had on board here, and they can all attest that They're, they've been in good hands with us. And uh, I've been very appreciative to have their stories documented. This is a great yeah, effort yeah. to also preserve a lot of history and, and another tell these stories that. for future generations. So uh, if you're hesitant, if we're going to hit you on the messenger at some point, uh, don't be. And if you have any questions, please reach out to myself or Vincent, or the, the, especially the main podcast page, you'll yeah, find one of us in there. Uh, you know, we work hard on this, and uh, we like to keep it that way. We have a lot of fun doing this, and as we always say, we're not slowing down. One thing I want to mention before we close off, I know a lot of people have been wondering, when's the next saloon sit-down after the first one? Well, the plan is, we want to do it after 16 episodes. Will that stay that way? Who knows? Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. So, in the next 16 episodes... Who knows? We may do another. We're just going to have to find out and wait and see. We're not slowing down. We're going to see you all next week.